Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. This is Bella. I am a proud mommy of Peter the cat, which you can see sometimes in the video. This is my channel where I talk about programming, technology, geeky things and sometimes some fitness. So in today's video we are going to check it out some very important concepts for web development, uh, which is the DOM and we are going to see what it is, how it works and how uh, it impacts the page that you see in your browser. So this is actually a video that I'm going to split in two parts. One is going to be this one which is the general definition of the DOM and I'm going to cut a paste out for a second video explaining the critical rendering path which is a part of how the DOM is actually rendered and created and is actually essential to um, understand this path in order to create better, faster um, pages. But since it's a little bit longer and complex, I decided that I'm going to make two videos out of this so that if you're interested in this topic, you can just check it out that video and this video won't be then that long. I'm going to uh, mention at some point about this other video and then I'm going to link here uh, up in the bubble. Okay, so let's get started. So what is the DOM that we are talking about, this D-O-M thing? Um, DOM stands for uh, Document Object Model. Once your browser receives a HTML document, it goes through a sequence of steps called the critical rendering path. That's what I mentioned in the beginning and I'm going to link here in the bubble for you to check it out if you want to understand in more details what this path is about. So we can group all those steps and actually to summarize in two main big groups. So in the first stage, um, the document is parsed and the elements that are going to be displayed on the page are defined according to the HTML document and its uh, respective styles from the CSS. And in the second stage, the rendering itself takes place and the pixels are painted in your screen. The first stage results in the creation of a render tree. That's a representation of all the HTML elements of your document and the respective styles for each of them. This render tree is created based on the CSS DOM and the DOM itself. The CSS DOM is an object representation of the styles associated with the elements and the DOM is an object representation of the source HTML that allows programs to read and to manipulate its content. We can say that basically the DOM is an interface, an API, um, that allows programs to read and manipulate the elements and the content uh, and the styles. So these objects, in summary, are models of the HTML document that can be then used by various programs. The structure of this DOM is represented by a node tree. It's called a tree because a single parent branches into its children uh, which are the nested elements and the content inside these nested elements, these children, we represent them as the leaves. Let's take a look at an example so that we can materialize in our heads what we are talking about. If we have an HTML file just like this, a very simple one, we can see the head and the body element as children from the root element HTML. Also, the title is a child of the head element and the heading and the paragraph are children of the body element. And inside each of these uh, nested children, we find the texts which are the content of each of these elements that are defined as the leaf. And we can represent this small HTML document as this tree where we can see the parent, children and its re respective content as the leaves. So let's suppose that the HTML that we are trying to visualize in the browser is actually missing some essential elements like the head or the body. So what happens in this case? Well, the DOM is important to remember that it's a representation of a valid HTML. So if some of those essential elements are missing, it's going to be added kind of automatically. However, they are going to be empty, but they are going to be in the DOM. They are going to be there, even if you haven't included them. 
you won't be uh, you won't have any content um, anyway so that's also not very interesting but just in case for you to understand that it's a representation of a valid HTML another important thing to understand about the DOM is that it can be manipulated using JavaScript and for instance you can add new elements you can change styles add styles or remove some style some classes of elements in this case the dom is actually going to be updated with the new classes or the new elements that you're adding and modifying through javascript however the html document itself won't be changed it won't be modified at all it's also important to remember that what you see in your browser is not the dom it's actually the render tree. The DOM contains all the elements, however, in the render tree, only those elements that should be displayed are present. So if you style an element with CSS and say that you want it to be hidden or displayed as none, it won't be in the render tree, but it will be present in the DOM. When you check the Chrome developer tools, what you see is actually pretty similar to the DOM. However, the developer tools include some elements that are not part of the DOM, like for instance the pseudo selectors before and after. These selectors are actually part of the CSS DOM and the render tree, but not from the DOM. This is the reason you cannot target these pseudo selectors, pseudo elements using JavaScript, because they are not in the DOM. So just to summarize everything up in a very short way, the DOM is an interface with access to the HTML document used by the browser to define what's going to be displayed in the viewport, which is your device and the size of your device. It doesn't matter if the viewport can be your computer, can be your mobile. These are all viewports. And it also allows JavaScript programs to manipulate the content, the elements, the classes, the styling. The DOM will also be always a valid HTML and it doesn't include pseudo elements or hidden elements. So this is the basics of the DOM. I just wanted to make this short video just with an overview of it, but it's actually pretty much it. Uh, but many people don't have any idea what this is about and they are creating pages and everything. So I thought it would be interesting to have just at least the basic notion of it. So now, if you're interested in understanding how the page is actually rendered in your browser, you can check it out the other video where I talk about all the processes and steps included um, in the processing of your HTML document until the pixels are actually painted in your screen. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something new. And please like the video, subscribe to the channel to support me. I see you next time. Bye.